Let's Talk Oculus, a VR podcast, is proudly sponsored by the good folks at Patreon. If you want to support the show, join us on patreon.com forward slash Let's Talk Oculus. What's up, Oculus nerds? Welcome back to Let's Talk Oculus, episode 132. I'm your host, as always, Dan from Playtest VR. And later on in part two, I'm going to be joined by Sam Clay, who is the producer at Wired Productions, better known for their hit title, Arcade Paradise. Now, Arcade Paradise is a flat screen game which has been ported over to uh, Quest. I, I say to ported, the actual developers are bringing it over rather than a, a third party developer, but they're bringing it to Quest on April 25th. And my gosh, does this game translate so well from its flat screen counterpart? In fact, if you're a big fan of the flat screen game, which I know a lot of you are, it's, it's a game that I've never played before. Um, but you'd want to play it again because it just adds a whole new level of immersion. So that's the game that I've been playing a lot, you know, for this last week. So I'm not going to talk too much about it right now because in part two, we will cover that. We had a great interview uh, with Sam over the weekend about the game, and um, I'm excited for you to hear all that. Um, elsewhere, obviously, Samson, my co-host, is is still not here at the pod. He, for those of you who missed it last week, he's uh, gone for personal reasons, but he will be back Um, later this month i'm sure um actually i did speak to him and he just got himself a playstation vr2 so he's been passing some time uh playing gran turismo uh, gran turismo 7 yeah that's the one (laughs) i forget it's been a long time um he's been playing gran turismo 7 and i know he's itching to talk about it on the pod uh, as well as other games that he's played on the psvr2 so that's what he's been doing but like i said we'll wait for him to come back now before we get into the interview with sam clay i just wanted to go over a few news stories there's there's three news stories to talk about and the the major one is the big quest 3 update uh v64 um so let's go over this update um and then we'll talk about different features and such and i've been I've had a chance to play around with this update. Um, I've been able to update my quest this morning, actually. Um, by the way, on the update, remember, like, normally, they Meta likes to roll out the update, um, like, across a few weeks or across a few days. Um, no, not everybody gets it on the same day, like pretty much every other operating system out there. Um, what I noticed, because I wanted to check if I if I had it, and I really, I noticed immediately because the pass-through is improved and we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but when you go into the settings and there's a software update uh, tab right there, um, there's a button that says update now and you can just update your quest. I didn't know if that was a thing before, but um, it did say underneath that um, it will automatically update um, later this week at a certain date. I can't remember exactly what date it was. Or I could just press update now and it will just update it automatically right now. Well, update it right now manually. Um, so I just did that. It took a few minutes and we're good to go, which is great. Uh, hopefully that's just what it is going forward. You know, maybe it was a feature that we missed. Um, if Let us know in the comments or in the Discord if that was already there. Because for what I remember, it's something that always, the updates are always something that rolls out uh, gradually. Um, But anyway, let's get into um, update V64, which is pretty um, big. I'm not going to lie. So the first thing is the pass-through quality. And it's the first thing that you're going to notice when you put on that headset. I don't know if you're like me. I I think Samson is for sure. But um, I don't... Now that I've had the Quest 3, I never have like a virtual home in for like my home hub. Uh, I used to do that for the Quest 2 all the time. I'd always have a virtual home hub. But now, because the Quest 3's pass-through is, is it's not amazing, but it's like good enough, I just have the pass-through on as soon as I put it on. The menus just overlay on top of it. So I noticed it immediately. They, there was an improvement in the pass-through quality. Uh, they have done something with the cameras or, or essentially... They've optimized pass through. I, th- I think what they've done, it looks like they've like reduced some of the uh, exposure and improved the color and the contrast or such like that to make things a bit more readable. And what I mean by that is uh, when you pick up your phone, so I just picked up my iPhone and it's clear as day pretty much. Not Obviously not as clear as just looking at it without through the VR lens, but it is like very very clear it's very impressive in fact it felt very much similar to the 
um, Apple Vision Pro demo that I had, albeit that was only um, 30 minutes. Um, but you, you can literally read everything and it's clear. Like before, you know, it depends on the angle. It could be a bit wavy on the phone. I would still like peek my eye between the like the nose hole just to see um, my phone if I needed to read notifications. Now you really, really don't need to do that. It is clear. Um, so the resolution is improved um, greatly. They also said they reduced the noise. Okay, so this is normally in low light. So you'll see like little... Um, a little bits of noise everywhere when it's always uh it's always low light uh, that has been approved in in my graininess is the word i was asking uh, looking for in my um testing today it's, it's still pretty much there i wouldn't say it's a, a night and day difference at least from my my testing uh, the biggest thing is the resolution everything's a little bit more sharper uh, but boz did post out a video which shows what pass through looked like on v63 to v64 now albeit as most of you know when you record um, in pass through on the quest it does look better on the videos that have been recorded than it actually does in the headset but to be honest from his videos it looks pretty accurate um and I'll try and put something up in uh, for the v v video watchers, but um, he compares them side by side. I'm sure if you look at Upload VR, um, you'll be able to see it. And I think he put it up on on Twitter or so. But uh, it, this is quite a substantial difference. So that's a one massive thing. Uh, the pass through has been improved, and you can really read your phone uh, quite clearly. Now, um, in terms of my monitor basically I, I had my my monitor up here and i had my like uh, work calendar up but i had the quest on that i still couldn't see uh that clearly i had to get really close to the monitor to be able to read the text but um i mean you don't really need to do that the whole point is just so you could just have a look at your phone um and see your notifications and continue vring you're not gonna obviously that's what virtual monitors are for but just as a tester through monitors so i would expect if you're trying to watch tv through this thing it might not be um drastically improved uh, i haven't tested that but definitely for for the phones uh, moving on, the next thing that they have is external microphone uh, support. So this is going to be great for you content creators or streamers out there. Um, a, a lot of people have noted this from day one, that the Quest 3's microphone quality is pretty poor. There's a lot of popping and such. I'm not going to lie, I don't find it that terrible for like multiplayer gaming, but if you're obviously recording um gameplay uh, through the mic and you want to post it online and such then it's it's not very good at all um i think the v62 did bring some updates in the uh, quest 3's microphone quality but it, it's great now because what you can do is you can um, connect a usb-c uh, mic um, or any mic via usb-c um, adapter as well uh, and then you can just use that um, which is which is fantastic. So you should get really good um, audio quality from from your VR play sessions if you need to stream. So that's that's a massive win for content creators and such. Um, elsewhere, you've got the lying down mode. Uh, this was this came in the last update for Quest Two and Quest Pro, but now you can do it with um, Quest. Essentially, all of these features, by the way, apart from the pass through, uh, you have to enable it in the experimental settings. Um, but in there, you can just um, turn on use apps while lying down. So then when you lie down um, and you press the recenter button, uh, all your apps will just be above you and such. And it just works clearly. Before, um, it'll be very awkward because the menu system and such will all be at the bottom and, and it, it just won't be optimized for lying down. So um, now they've brought that, which is great. I haven't tried that yet, but um, um, I can't wait to try that when it comes to movies and such. Uh, I think that'd be great. Um, Perfect. And then finally, this is actually another streamer thing. Uh, if you're casting your quest to a TV or an external device, you know, like a streaming platform or anything like that, uh, what would normally happen is that if you take it off your headset, um, it, the stream will just cut to black. Now it just continues recording. Uh, so this would be great, you know, if you just need to pop it off. If you're casting, pop it off, give it to somebody in your household if you're doing like a VR party or so. Um, now the screen just won't go black and you have to, you know, reset, you redo it and such like that. It just, it's going to continue recording, which is fantastic. So, uh, really big updates. I mean, the biggest one for me is the pass through. It does look, uh, substantially, uh, better. 
uh and not obviously there's only so much you can do with just cameras to be honest um but it is it is a bit of a night and day difference uh the graininess is just going to be improved with better cameras in the future for sure so um that's our first new story uh v64 is up uh, now if you haven't already downloaded it you can do it um directly in the settings um Moving on, we've got the Beat Saber um, update, which is, well, a new DLC, rather, which is a hip-hop mixtape. Um, we have tracks from Tupac, we have All Eyes on Me, Nicki Minaj, Anaconda, Snoop Dogg, Gin and Juice, Eminem, Godzilla, Outkast, Iheya, um, The Notorious B.I.G., Hypnotize, Dr. Dre, Nothing But a G Thang, uh, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, The Message, and Pop Smoke, The Woo. Uh, really cool music pack. Um, I'm when it comes to music uh, taste, I I'm a, I'm a big hip hop fan, especially in the olden days, like when I was growing up. Uh, most of the hip hop I do listen to is like '90s hip hop. Um, I'm kind of moving my genres to more electronic music and um, rock music and such. My genres are all over the place. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I know all these songs and um, I'm still not really going to buy this. I'm not really a big Beat Saber player. Um, but this, I can see this being fantastic for a lot of people. Uh, I think it costs $12 as well. And you can buy it right now. Um, and obviously, if you have like a PSVR 2 and a PC VR and such, they, you know, it it's out for all of those um, as well. Uh, I see that there's also a new environment when it comes to the hip hop mode. Um, there's different visuals for urban basketball courts, underpasses, substage stations, graffiti, um, and such. So, yeah, check out the hip hop mixtape if that music is your thing. Um, it would definitely be my thing, but like I said, <laughs> not a big beats ever player, um, at least not anymore. Um, it's a great game, though. It's amazing. I just. Just don't play it. Uh, and then finally, another game that I don't really play, but I kind of wish Samsung was here to talk about it, is Breaches just um, released a new update, which is out as of now. Uh, it's a new uh, competitive mode, and it starts from season zero. So I'm assuming, assuming this would be a classic, like maybe monthly or quarterly. There'll be the next season where there'll be more um, like loot and, and such that you can you can get from 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 playing but uh essentially it's a ranked competitive mode okay and then essentially you get different tiers depending on how you finish in there you've got bronze silver gold platinum diamond and then there's master grandmaster and gold champion uh, as well but all of these different ranks unlocks new weapon skins and uh, i think credits as well yeah there's different credits and such as well um there's, there's also a cool thing where if you quit early in the match you do get uh, penalized and if you start quitting early uh, quite in quite a lot of matches rage quitting rage quitting is what i'm trying to say um you do get penalized which is uh, kind of a nice thing to see uh but yeah that's that's the breaches update like i'm sure when samson comes back he'll be able to talk about this a lot more i just don't play <laughs> breaches or or beat saber this is this is why we need samson back on the show uh, but yeah, that's everything. To be honest, that's that's our news stories. I've not been playing any VR apart from Arcade Paradise, so uh, we're gonna get that. We're gonna get into that in part two. Um, just before I move on to part two, next week we're gonna have um, a, another guest on the show. We're gonna have the folks behind the game Nope Challenge. Uh, nope challenge definitely check out this game by the way uh, obviously we'll talk about it next week pod but um essentially what it is is that you will think about face your fears in a way but it's, it's it's a little bit different so okay let's take me as, as the example um i do not like spiders it's notorious i do not like spiders and i can say okay my fear is spiders so then what it will do is try it will try to um I guess, gradually help you with your fear. So we'll start off with like a spider drawing and I can pick that up and go, okay, yeah. Then it will give me a toy spider, a nice little pink toy spider. Can I pick that up and, and hold it? Great. Now go into a cabin and <laughs> be attacked by all these spiders. <laughs> so I feel, I feel like there's a few few things in the middle before you jump straight to that cabin and such but then if you're if you're struggling you can just tap your watch three times and it will say nope and then it will take you back to um uh this like little 
like a little resort so you can just chill out for a second before you're ready to go back in okay now that i mentioned it i think i mentioned it when i when i talked about the april games last week but um if you haven't had a chance to check it out yet definitely check out nope we'll be talking to the developers uh next week on that one and and without further ado that will do for our very very short part one uh, like i said in part two i'm joined by sam clay the producer of wired productions better known for the hit game archive paradise which is coming out this month so it was a great conversation i hope you enjoy it let me know any feedback in the discord in the spotify in the youtube comments and i'll talk to you later hey we know public lobbies and vr games can be a bit toxic feel a bit empty at times that's why we created the let's talk oculus discord a friendly community that you can join for multiplayer meetups general vr chat the game and chat about VR, fitness motivation, and there's even a very impressive 3D printing channel. Join over 100 of our community members in the Let's Talk Oculus Discord for free. The link is right in the description. All right, welcome back to part two, where I'm joined by Sam Clay, producer at Wired Productions, better known for their hit game, Arcade Paradise, which is coming to uh, Quest this month. Sam, welcome to the show. How's things going? It's um, it's good. I had a late night last night because it was WrestleMania, um, and then, bless, you've just got up, so time differences <laughs> and all that. So uh, I, We're rusty. The, you are <laughs> devoted to doing a podcast at that time in the morning. I would still be very much breakfast in bed, whatever. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Especially because Wrestle- <laughs> we had a WrestleMania watch party last night, so there was a lot of drinking involved and such. Oh. So yeah. We're a little bit rusty, but that's why I had my questions prepared before I ended up getting <laughs> drunk because I knew there's no way I could form a conversation otherwise. So. Brilliant. By, it's, it's professional standards. That's what we live for, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, all right. Let's uh, get into get into obviously Arcade Paradise. Now, before we obviously dive into the game, can you give like a little bit of an explanation to the folks at home if they don't know what Arcade wow. Paradise is? Um, do you know what? It's one of these games where it's so unique that uh, it's not. I can't just rattle off the 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 spiel of like you know the fourteen word marketing line or whatever like that. Um, <laughs> I, I can give you the the premise. The premise is it based in the early nineties in nineteen ninety three. Uh, you play a character uh, called Ashley, and basically you're in a dead end job, um, and you've been given like one last opportunity to you know make good of your teenage years shall we say and your your dad owns this la- uh laundrette laundromat i always forget which whichever mm-hmm. international <laughs> version you want um and uh and anyway so you end up start running his um laundromat and in the back room there are arcade machines and this is sort of similar to the, the era that this random uh, uh, places of interest, you know, even especially over in the UK, there was like kebab shops or fast food places mm-hmm. uh, would have a knackered arcade machine in the corner for no, just, and that's where people played, uh, at least in the UK. I uh, know mm-hmm. massive arcades did exist, but like that was sort yeah. of the, the, the going. Anyway, so um, you find out that these arcade machines in the back of the, the place are making more money than the actual business itself. So we end up uh, leading you down this road where you tell your dad this and your dad goes, no, 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 there's no money in your computer games, you know, your arcade yeah. machi- arcade cabinet machines, whatever, do the job. You know, people want laundry sanitation, I think is the exact wording or something. And, uh, and uh, you know, you'll make, you'll make uh, money and everything will go well. Of course, you go against your your dad's uh, uh, thought process <laughs> and your yeah, wishes, yeah. And uh, you you begin in the back room uh, uh, creating this arcade. So very, uh, yeah. Imagine it's not <laughs> describing it. It's as mad as it sounds, and everything mm. in the actual like washing of clothes part is all gamified. So it's not yeah. just. So you, that's actually like a job you can enroll in and we never actually tell the player they have to do something so it's quite interesting watching people play the game because they're like they they have this mindset of being i've been told by like dad that i've got to do this so i better do it actually you don't have to you can just 
totally play this as a you know an arcade game simulator really. <laughs> i spent 40 minutes just doing laundry <laughs> I was like, yeah there you go what? you know i was like i'm making a fair bit of bank and then picking up trash and i sometimes just forget about the arcade so i guess it's what you're into and what your your head you know what you just mentioned with the dad like in like saying oh there's no money in the the arcade business i have a little random tangent story here um basically i remember back in the day i have one vivid memory about gaming and my dad um we had a sega mega drive or sega genesis i think for north americans and we had like a bunch of games like sonic michael jackson lion king aladdin all those games and i remember the day where my dad was like oh you don't need that anymore we have a ps1 so he put everything in a box and he put it straight in the black bin um in our house i remember like stood next to him and he opens the black bin and he throws the box with the mega drive directly in the bin no, really, he didn't yeah. even like oh. give it away or like yeah. charity oh, no. or like <laughs> anything like that he just put it straight in the bin because oh. he, he's a guy who is like very much an anti-hoarder like he would right, not okay, keep right. things well, you're not so he was anymore. like yeah 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 you, you don't need this you have a ps1 now and you put it oh yeah, so when you said about the dad with the arcade machines in the back, yeah, that yeah, just yeah. sparked a memory from the past right there. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I mean, the um, it's really funny because people have uh, meant um, – we, we've actually got quite a good Reddit for the – for the game that's obviously the community have sort of made themselves and there's mm -hmm. uh, there's a few there's a lot of easter eggs in this game because it's a, a labor of love it's a development that's basically you know most of the team has worked on it they, they were the years of their their teenage their teenage yeah. years so like there's all that in part um uh bled into it effectively but like the mm -hmm. one thing's for sure is that we've had people say oh I actually really liked the, <laughs> the the laundrette stuff. Can you like, can we have like, can you just make like laundra laundrette simulator? You know, just give me that, but just washing and it's 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 mad. Yeah, yeah. People play I mean, anything, right? <laughs> people play anything. I mean, <laughs> yeah, to yeah. be fair, simulator games are so popular nowadays. I think it's because people could just like throw it on and just lose themselves to like a mundane act or so and you know yeah, job yeah, simulator yeah. in vr is like one of the most popular games and still is to this day and you know it's just who wants to do a job you know but obviously there's some goofiness to it and the gamified and that's what you've done you know you you pick up the trash and then it's like a little mini game throwing the trash into the the garbage can or so right so you've like made it gamified so it's not it's not just yeah you got to iron the i think ironing the clothes would have been a bit too much oh you know? <laughs> yeah well yeah no that sounds that feels like asmr but in vr or vs yeah. i don't know but <laughs> the important thing we need to say is you can clean the toilet and yes. in the flat version you plunge the toilet you just sort of plunged it and you found the sweet spot and, and the, the toilet would flush in the VR version. We were like, well, we've, we've got to really go for this. So you toilet brush a mm. very dirty gross. toilet. Yes, it feels like it gets toilet. worse as the game goes on, I in my just, opinion. Yeah, every no, time, I, maybe just because like, I forget about it. But every time I go back to there, I'm like, whoa, there's crap whoa. stains everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of us having like a... A behind, like a story about who that might be that's doing that <laughs> i mean do you know what yeah. i mean like some like dirty john walks into the laundry mat <laughs> yeah it's laundry yeah. done he doesn't play the games though he goes straight <laughs> yeah. into that just goes straight <laughs> in the throne yeah whatever um <laughs> but you end up in a routine every day and you do uh like i say you don't have to do it but i find myself always cleaning the place up i find that that stuff really satisfying the the throwing trash in the bin it turns the mm -hmm. bin into basically a basketball game and yep. it's just so the whole idea of um ashley as a character is that they've ga they're gamifying everything so mm -hmm. everything in their life if it can be a, you know if it can be gamified it, it is and that's sort of where we run with the game but also in the in the area it was set in um, when you bought a game, be it in a lovely, beautiful, massive box, as uh, you may or may not remember, um, mm -hmm. you would you would go and buy it, and then on the journey home, or if you took the bus home or whatever, you would read every every, every page in a manual. That manual. Yeah. And you and you got the fresh smell of the manual as well. You 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 looked at the dual CD case or whatever, and mm -hmm. you just you, or cartridge, and you just 
you you just soaked it all up before you mm-hmm, even played mm-hmm. it. So you you've done your your literature reading or whatever like that. You know, you didn't you didn't head on YouTube to find out a guide or, no. or whatever. You just you just took in every single page. And, and manuals back then had great pictures and drawings and you know even oh, notes s- because <laughs> because yeah, it was cheaper geez. to have a larger manual. <laughs> so <laughs> you just get pages of notes at the back. Yeah, pay- that I, I never that. used. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guess wrote for cheats per se but i guess most of those games didn't have cheats in so it was like yeah I, those manuals it was a special time like it's it's really lost nowadays you know through like just digital games and also youtube and all that stuff but that whole aspect of you driving home and you're looking through that manual and you kind of know all the controls and everything oh yeah in yeah, and yeah, out. yeah yeah and it even had the story normally inside those manuals as well exactly about the game right and- the disappointment it, when you finally got those games and they didn't have manuals in, or they just had like a sheet of like where yeah, the controls when they, were. I, yeah, or yeah, you got the sheet, or you got like some legal piece of paper, and I, you felt it was slowly like dying. I think uh, towards the end, if I recall, like when you bought a game, um, you knew already by the weight of it if you were lucky enough that the game had yeah. a manual civilization obviously you got a bible with it do you know what i mean <laughs> you, you'd have to ca- carry it home with two hands but like uh yeah no these are special things we love about um well at least did love about games more so i don't know um if if suddenly someone started manufacturing manuals again i don't know if people <laughs> would take to i it. feel I like yeah it's one of those i've seen i've seen even like magazines like coming out with like trying to start magazines again and such and i think it's just so so much of a niche that it just doesn't make any sense in terms of uh, profitability and all that stuff so yeah I mean, there's a reason so, why they don't really exist as much now right so it's it's, it's sad it's a little bit of a dying art now it's yeah it's, it's tough much. i mean unless you've got say support or a patreon or something like that like so mm. you, where you know how much money you've got to invest in something before you just suddenly dump it um yeah yeah and I think a lot of the magazines that are now launching, like even today, it's all out of a labor of love. Like I don't think yeah. they're they're going to go and buy a, a speedboat next week, or you know, <laughs> no, no, that's just a passion project in a way. Yeah, but precisely right. Yeah, well, like let's spe- speak about the fans a little bit here because um, I feel like the fans uh, there's there's a lot of fans for this game. There's a lot of people who really like this game. Like I I reached out to the community and just said that you know I'm interviewing you this weekend and it's about Arcade Paradise and there's so many comments we got in our Discord community. Oh, like, it's amazing! Oh, I'm so hyped. I love that game on PC and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Like oh, loads awesome. of people are saying that, and I just wanted to ask like what. Like obviously this game came out for PC and, and consoles. I think it started from August 2022 onwards and such. But like it's beloved by many as we see, but have you kind of seen a lot of that recognition on your side as well? Oh yeah, yeah. It's been um we actually released uh oh yeah, it's too preliminary. I mean, I've been on it since day one, uh in mm-hmm. development side. So I've i I've seen it uh, you know, sort of grow up, you know, and then finally mm-hmm. go out the door. But um yeah, we um, we released actually the same week as like uh, Cult of the Lamb, I think it was. Yeah, and yeah. Um, we it was sort of a qui- it was sort of quiet. We knew we had like lots of immediate feedback, which was oh, I love this, and it was it, ironically saying Cult of the Lamb. It felt slightly like Arcade was cult Im- immediately because as soon as you mm-hmm. if you come out and there's a title at the same week, you can get sort of you can go under the radar sort of thing, and then week by week we saw more and more people playing it some really mm. big um, numbers on, on YouTube of, uh, and streamers playing it. And then everyone just sort of, it, it sort of begin, we saw it like start to click from yeah. everyone. And, and, and this is where like the fans have been absolutely amazing because they've, they've basically, it's been the word of mouth of like, you've got to try this. And then everyone has this, the retention rate is incredible because of how well Nosebleed have done to, to make everything gamified and like, a, you know, mm-hmm. one more go or whatever like that. And uh, yeah. there's, f- there's a lot of things throughout the game. Um, there is obviously, obviously a story arc and there is an ending and, you know, the big dramatic middle as any film goes or whatever. But uh, the interesting thing is there's little bits here and there where we give the game, uh, the, the player a task to do or a challenge or a goal. Mm-hmm. And people really bond over that. Like, Back in the day, arcades had high scores and leaderboards yeah. and stuff like that. And we've got a lot of games uh, in arcade where they're very, very simple games, but getting that, you know, getting your high score 
better than mm-hmm. all your mates or being top 10 in the world is so satisfying. And there's been like, mm-hmm. um, ask me anything's uh, AMAs on Reddit of like, I'm top 10 in uh, Woodgal, uh, <laughs> ask me anything. And it's so, it's so funny. And what's even funnier is that um, I don't think uh, the QA team have actually put their scores in or at least like, purposely gone out mm-hmm. their way to destroy everyone that's got the yeah. game but we did an inter we had an internal leaderboard while uh w- we were developing it and internally the scores we got were absolutely amazing but then i i'm glad that no one has gone in and sort of spoiled them although now For i've sure. said that i know exactly what's going to happen uh, <laughs> when i'm in the office like someone's just going to take someone's just going to see the high score and go right i'm having it you know yeah, um, yeah i'm going to go for that one <laughs> yeah and and That's and fair. when we did this um ironically i'd like to say it's me because we i share the same name with sam who works in qa as well but he i basically said right who whoever working on the title gets um high score we'll put your name in the game because there's like an email system where we've Mm -hmm. got we sort of have characters that speak to you effectively and um yeah so sam won uh i gave it you know deadline or whatever and he won and then um Mm -hmm. there's every time he challenged you in the game like am i allowed to swear i don't want to like yeah 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 (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah, say whatever you want right okay bless um there's this thing uh, doing the rounds, which is hilarious, of just like "fuck you, Sam," and it's and and there's just like constant like constant uh, messages. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, I just go, you fuck you. And what people, uh, what we made it happen was, and this is, I want it to be more more brutal. By the way, is um, once you get past the high score, um, mm. the game will automatically challenge you to go higher. So the idea of actually beating it is you go, you know, you you get a really yeah. low score and then you just, you, 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 but people were going so high, so mm. high. And then, and then Sam's email would kick in and go, now I beat you by five or whatever like that. And they just, <laughs> they just get, and I wanted to, but unfortunately Dre, who's the game director on it, sadly said, no, I wanted it to be constant. I want it to yeah, never end. Just keep going. And then I yeah, just yeah. wanted someone to realize, wait a minute, no, this can't be. And I just wanted it to be like, you're get, being properly trolled by this person <laughs> over and over again. But uh, I was not allowed to do that, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's fair enough. And and that shares the same name as you. So you're also getting the fuck you, Sam. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting on. it. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've got, um, I think I've got another challenge that's named after me. But the yeah, ironically, there's two Sams that speak There's just to you. two Sams. Yeah, that's yeah. fair enough. Um, at least, at least I, think I remember being. <laughs> now, this obviously game, you know, like we said, is is out on on the flat screens, but it's coming to VR uh, this month on Quest. I think it's April twenty fifth, as far as I remember. Yes, yeah, 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 April twenty fifth. Um, it seems like a perfect fit. This to VR, it seems like just an obvious choice. Like, was this always the idea, or was something that the fans have been pushing, or just something that came along so, along the way? Yeah. So it's really interesting because it, it literally is. Uh, we worked out that it was a perfect fit when we saw the the game was designed and like let's try it in VR, see how it is in VR, and mm-hmm. then it just makes so much sense. It's just yeah. it's so much fun, and yeah. the uh, aspect, and, and actually, I would say the washing part of it in VR is like next level. If it if is. I was That's to why make I spent comp- forty minutes, That's oh why yeah, I spent forty minutes in it. <laughs> like I always enjoyed, uh, you know, wa- washing and cleaning the place up, but you know. I'm I'm the arcade guy. I want to go to get in there, but in VR, I'm just like, oh, now like this is even, this is even more fantastic. It's and, immersive. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, to- it totally is. And we've met, we've even had so much fun just doing. I don't know if you've seen our trailers, but um, the guys who work on the trailers are amazing. Uh, Curtis mm-hmm. especially. So he's been he had to put one of the trailers together and and, and uh, capture some of the footage, and he had a lot of fun doing it. And in the trailer, you see him throwing like the baskets and yep. doing the old uh, finger guns and stuff like that. And that's not out of like a direction of like, oh, it needs yeah. to be like that. No, that was totally out of like challenge yourself to have uh, loads of fun. And actually, when mm. you watch people play it, you know that they're having fun when they're doing like that because they, they've been told yeah. the rules of doing something and then they, you know, they go to it. And then, of course, we went and got VR cabinets involved, you know, that are are even more immersive and light gun games, which are just really, really cool in VR. Mm. And then the one that really is, um, I mean, I can't wait for people to see it for themselves, is the the mixed reality stuff. Now, Mm, 
I myself that that has really changed what VR could um, is and can be because yeah. when the Quest Three and I remember uh, having an early uh, early kit of it or whatever, and um, I tried all the mixed reality demos, I actually found them like I did like two three hours like of these these demos I was given and it 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 my brain just went do you know what mm. this is this is really really cool and i did all the the um like i literally worked in mixed reality in the office and put things places for like and it, yeah. you know obviously minority report is a film with tom cruise but <laughs> i actually felt like do you know what? I feel like I could actually work like this. This is, maybe like my workflow would be would be better. And then I experienced, you know, experienced games with it, and that's even more next level. I, I could, I'm I'm I must admit, like horror games aren't for me. I I mm-hmm. jump scares are not my bag, right? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I ain't gonna be touching it. But, in VR, it's like oh turned up word. a notch. Yeah, <laughs> and then in mixed reality, I think I would like because it's the sensory of not knowing what's behind you. So I just, yeah, no, but incredible for, <laughs> you know, those people who are willing to go through that. Uh, but, you know, for I really sure. enjoy it. And then, and then Pete, and obviously mixed reality for arcade, you know, why don't you set up yeah. your own arcade in your, you know, your play area. And um, yeah. it's a lot, it's a real so lot of cool. fun actually. It's so cool. Yeah. It's like one of the, I mean, we sp- said this on the podcast way back as well. It's like one of my dream games is to have like your own arcade and kind of build it. And this is kind of it, it, what it is, right? It's just that the games that you've built are just like a love language to all these official games that have come out, which is which is great. And we'll get into the games in a second. But um, in terms of the mixed reality, your trailer for mixed reality is really cool because someone's just by a lake and they just set up <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. a bunch of arcade cameras and such. Um, but like what when it, when it comes to the mixed reality, aspect of it what what how much customization is there like can you bring any of those cabinets into mixed reality and and does it save and or do you have to like rebuild it right now when you come back in so as it's uh yeah so you just bring in any any of your um any of your cabinets and Mm -hmm. the uh environment around you uh just effectively works as like you say an arcade so please don't put your arcade in a lake because that isn't going to work well uh uh the you know every time you have to set it up um it will basically be a a, a clear because you're actually entering right. a machine so it's yeah. like it's like even more meta i hate using that term because it now means a lot of things uh, uh you're going in vr into vr and you physically put a vr headset on in, in vr in and the then game, you, and yeah then, yeah and you really double down on it um but then it's so much fun just to have because then you can just set up the arcade and play the arcade in a spa, and you can walk around in the space or whatever. But you're earning mm. money in 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 mixed reality, so it's not like you know, it's not like a oh, I've actually got to go do it in the real world. No, 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 everything's still mm. going. So yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's it's really not like a separate experience. It's all like built in in with the actual game and everything. Exactly. It's just that you get to experience it in your room, um, which is really it's, fun. It's definitely not like, um, oh, want to play it in mixed reality just because this is an option. No, no, it's a straight up yeah. like, yeah. Built in, yeah. So for those of you who have spent all their money on a Quest 3 and can't afford any one of those arcade one-up cabinets and such like that that you can buy, just throw in, just, yeah. you know, just, just yeah, buy yeah, Arcade yeah. Paradise and get, yeah. get one in there. And you can, yeah. you know, you don't even have to move anything. Do you know what I mean? You just, just yeah. dump your... <laughs> <laughs> MR, yeah. MR cabinet don't have to plug it in or whatever like that so yeah no the, the thing i really love about mixed reality is that it, it opens the doors up to a lot of games and it, it sometimes makes games better like tabletop games for example arcade cabinets is a perfect idea um sports games as well because you're now aware of your surroundings so you <laughs> yeah, can, yeah, you, know, yeah. you have like the table tennis um game set up and you know you, you know where you go you know where you are you're not going to hit a wall or such so you can commit a little bit harder so that's really cool i, I like the idea of the the mixed reality was this you did you always think like this is you want to bring mixed reality from the get-go when you saw that question? oh yeah oh, t- yeah. totally so you know um if we knew that we were going to be uh developing on quest 3 and it had mixed reality why not let's let's have a look how we can make why not mixed reality work and there's yeah. nothing cooler than uh we we really like the game within a game scenario. We 
there is a game already in the game where you can walk into an arcade in the so you're uh, i mean it just goes on and on doesn't it you're in a game <laughs> yeah. in an arcade and then you play a game in the arcade and in the game there's an arcade you can play games you, do you know what i mean so we're there's all some about inception that. Kind <laughs> yeah, of stuff. It's totally, yeah the, the uh, trophy for it is actually game gameception so it's um <laughs> yes yeah, pretty yeah. wild that's fair so like there's um i think i wrote down there's 27 arcade games that have like got the classic controls and such and you've got stuff like a pac-man game like a gun shooter like an air hockey obviously these are all games that i I like the idea of like not trying to just go and try and license them out because i feel like that would be a nightmare and this project will never probably get off the ground but the fact that you just went in and built your own like kind of versions of these in a way it's also it's not really fitting of the style we're going after we we want to really like homage the times and as soon as you put a real a name of something real in there you sort of you you always already have distanced yourself like fourth wall breaking or whatever yeah um so we definitely didn't want to do that and also it's worth pointing out and people will comment about it um is that we didn't we we tried making every game via VR playable is that and, and a lot of the games it just it just made the game a lot worse so mm, we, we yeah. everything was looked at and we went through and we we've got a, a twin stick shooter in there and there's no way of playing that on an arcade cabinet and it being as good as what we know we've yeah. made the the game to be so we uh we chose the ones that it, it made sense for and um I mean, I would love to, because I, I think someone someone online had said, like, oh, it's a shame that they haven't done all of it. And I would love to speak to people who have said that and be like, okay, play it in VR and see how bad this is. Like, like mm. how bad? You're not going to have any. You're going to play it for about five minutes and be like, well, this is a bit annoying. No, it'd, um, be, fr- it'd be frustrating, right? I, I'm, the, um, I think there was one game that you have early on, the, like, uh, let's say the, the Pac-Man-inspired, like, car racing one, where the, you, you know, you're yeah, in yeah, a yeah. supercar and you've got the cops, right? And yeah. at, the, at first, I had no idea that it was just going to be controls. I thought it'd be VR. So I was, like, grabbing the steering wheel and such, and I was like, what's going on here? And such. And But then I was like, oh, okay, I realized that they're actually using the thumbsticks. And initially, I did feel that slight bit of disappointment, but then I did think about it. I was like, hold on. If I was putting my arm trying to move that car wheel every single time, I'm going to have a work. frustrating time. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be fun for like a minute or two. And then I realize how like janky it is doing it this yeah, way. Exa- and- yeah. If it's not broken, don't fix it and all that. But like mm-hmm. you, the mechanics of that game, it's effectively Grand Theft Auto, right? That That's what yeah. Grand Theft Auto is anyway, because you're going to A to B to get something and you're, you've yeah. got an, a, a, effectively an opponent. And you can get out the car and you shoot music at the police officers and they, they dance. Mm-hmm. and now <laughs> it's, it's okay now now design that physically on the cabinet it just wouldn't work it just would not work no. so we would be um undoing all this all these great games we put together um yeah and uh do. yeah just wouldn't happen yeah but but you do have i think uh six or seven or no actually more than that i think it was like 12 vr games i think yeah, yeah. yeah. We've- um that you have so you've got some in there already yeah yeah um, oh, we would never get we were never going to do a vr version and not put vr the games <laughs> yeah. in it. that would seem um uh, you know unfulfilling but uh some of the sure. the vr games for sure like uh especially the the smoke and uh like the light gun one it's just yeah it's just so much fun um that, and, that's so much fun yeah yeah if it takes and, me back to like the PS1 game days as well, when you did have a light gun at home and such, and yeah, using yeah, when, those. you know, you've got time yeah. crisis on the go or or exactly. whatever, yeah, um, and yeah, and now you can do, now finally we can play light guns again, <laughs> light, light gun games <laughs> again, yeah, in all its glory. Um, do you have any like favorite games? Any any specific ones that stand out to you that you really really like to play? Um, blockchain is my my favorite, so that's a take on Drop Seven. Um, mm-hmm. which effectively is a, a game in which uh, uh, blocks fall down with a number in and you have to c- clear each line depending on how many blocks are on top of it. It's yeah. hard to explain, but once you get the idea of it and then it clears. And then we we, we basically took Drop 7 and then add our, added our own little twist on it. So then there's like power-ups and it gets even more manic. And that's that's a time, an absolute time sink. Like you, you, mm. you've, you've gone into test something to make sure something's working. And before you know it, you've accidentally spent 40 minutes playing a game. Um, yeah. And fair. then I, I, I do think the, the, the smoke and take in VR is, is so much fun. Um, mm-hmm. and especially, uh, the, 
<clears throat> especially just the antics of uh, leaderboards and high scores and stuff like that. Just it it just makes it so much more enjoyable. Yeah, absolutely. Would you? Did you ever think of making the the toilet uh, a leaderboard game as well? Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I just know <laughs> in South Park uh, in the South Park games, I know there's like a little mini game like that as well. Where, I oh, mean, yeah, that's you, kind of what you've done yeah, in terms yeah, of cleaning. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that in the South Park. Yeah, you had to. Yeah, you had to find the the sweet spot in South Park, didn't you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, what would you, you want a leaderboard for the quickest clean or like? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> the most squeakiest clean. No. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. It's for, it's funny that one is like because uh, you know we spoke about it earlier but the the, the vr is obviously immersive right it, it makes you feel like you're inside the game and that's why a lot of people like vr but the 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 toilet and especially you know or the or the bathroom shall we say to be politically correct in north america is um <laughs> that's one thing where it's like okay this is quite immersive and uh <laughs> you're just kind of like doing it from the side imagine explaining but, to someone what you were doing do you know what i mean like um, yeah. oh what did you do yeah. yesterday oh i was just um cleaning a toilet in vr what? that's what i said to my yeah. girlfriend <laughs> she was like oh what have you been doing i was like oh, i've been doing some laundry and cleaning <laughs> yeah, yeah, shit stains yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. She's come around and gone. Oh wow, you've made a real. Oh yeah. no, you did what? Yeah. yeah. Still well, what about washing? our laundry and such? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, the place is still a mess. <laughs> what yeah, have you been doing? A mess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's an arcade involved, so yeah, yeah exactly. why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's an arcade involved. <laughs> I want to. I want to talk about the music um, for a second because I think the music. I, I know this is obviously in, in the flat screen version as well, but the, I think the music is such a fantastic homage to the '90s kind of era. It was is the music tracks like original music or is this something that you've like sourced or like- Dan you're after my own heart I'm so glad you, <laughs> you brought this up honestly um the music uh, uh, has been so much fun to work on and make so it's all original it's all inspired nice. by other other songs uh mm-hmm. it, and I, I wish I had the vinyl but I don't it's um it's on damn it but um it's just a, it's just a, it's another labor of love we made we put the soundtrack on a vinyl and it's a beautiful yeah. art piece and um mm-hmm. you know we've really we've really gone the whole nine yards with it all but uh yeah no every track is inspired by tracks of the 90s well, obviously we don't explicitly say this is um x but yeah. um for those who have listened to it they know if they know those songs yeah. they'll be like oh mate this is totally this and and that yeah. is exactly what we wanted and the other part about it is we got uh, a guy called Kieran Pepper uh, involved, mm. who's the live drummer for a little a little band called The Prodigy, um, oh. amongst other things. Yeah, so uh, as soon as we got in contact with him, um, he, he he got the idea straight away. He knew he he, he, he right, right, leave it to me. And um, mm-hmm. th- it was actually all curated and written during um uh covid and lockdown and all, all that so yeah. he had this amazing passion project and that and that's the important thing we always say about arcade across the board is that we we'd managed to hook up with this t- incredibly talented musician and writer mm-hmm. it become his passion project to make it and then everyone involved in making it just really doubled down on on every track and i think we, what we've made is just absolutely next level and yeah i'm gl- i'm glad that something like that you've commented on because i think it's really easy sometimes for people to uh uh just walk past the the music of a game or you know I'm- sort of like ignoring art indirectly it's funny you say that because I'm kind of sad that my my co-host Samson isn't on this call because um, he's definitely one to play games with the volume off or like the sound right down to the bottom. Right, okay. So okay. I also wanted to mention it because I need him to when he goes into this if he's not played it already to put the volume right up because put the, it up the music the music really shines to me and it's one of those um, there's a game you probably uh, Hotline Miami have you played that yeah, before yeah yeah, yeah, on, yeah. yeah. That, that game is um, obviously a completely different game, but similar in terms of it taps into that nostalgia of like the 90s kind of feel. And that has like different kind of music, more of a, like a synth wavy kind of music. But it's the music that really sticks with you in that game. And I'm, I still remember it to this day. And I think this is the same with this. It's like the music is so iconic to me. It's just like oh, I feel like awesome. every time I'm 
every time I'm jumping in, it's like, I, maybe that's why I don't mind doing laundry for so much is because you want to the music to, yeah. around me is just is just great. And i seen also on, on Steam, I think you can buy the soundtrack on there as oh, well. Yeah, so, I was just right? about to say, yeah, uh, it's available on Steam and like all the Spotify uh, platforms, whatever you, you know, nice. Bandcamp and the oh, rest I didn't realize so can, it was on yeah, um, you can go and, uh, platforms. Yeah, cool. yeah, so you can go and uh, listen to it all, which I know you will do after this, right? Yes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, um, I am listening to that in the gym tomorrow for sure. <laughs> oh, amazing. Um, the, the, the mental thing was, right, making this, um, and it's so funny, is it was my commute music for months, right? Yeah. And I was listening to music that wasn't, like, wasn't, like, released music, wasn't mm-hmm. in the real world as it were just like in a game that hasn't even come out yet and it was just i was in i just perked me up every day i just was like f- f- mm-hmm. like ready to ready to rock and it was just the perfect soundtrack and then and then you release it and we actually we did we had a launch party for the um the the uh, the flat an initial release right and we put on a band that played the yeah. music from the game, right? Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> with this, bear in mind, I've been listening to it for like a year, six months or whatever like that. Mm-hmm. I know what it mm-hmm. sounds like. Everyone who works on it knows we sound it. But we stood there at one point and went, this is weird because no one else in this room mm. knows what's being played because <laughs> it's just, because it's the first time they've ever heard it. So they're going to yeah. be like, this is bizarre. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's just we're love we're absolutely loving it. We're singing away, we know all the lyrics, and everyone's thinking, Oh, is it, this must be a band we're just not aware of because it was just it was such an amazing night. It was so much That's fun. So cool. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have the Which drummer I think from we, Prodigy there as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, he was he was there. So he, he, he was yeah, there he put, too. Oh, he put sweet. all the, the different acts together for us. And the bizarre thing is about that night, it was so much fun, especially like hearing that music played live. Mm-hmm. Um I would love to like if we could like put it on again and see like how many people would because of the the following we've gained from it. Yeah. How many people would like genuinely like turn up and like you know really really understand go for it. it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 really go for it. So yeah, yeah. We'll be That's touring. Cool. And- Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> UK tour first. We'll start small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the the vinyl you mentioned is that something that people can buy or is that just more yes. of an in house kind of. You, no, no, no. You you, you, it, yeah. you can buy that. Um, it's available on Amazon. It's available on on the Wired Production Store. So yeah, no, okay. it's, it's it's totally available. Yeah, I'll I'll post a link in it in the description for anyone who's interested, or at least to look at what the art looks like. Oh, uh, you amazing. Know. Yeah, would love that. So, I mean, so. I think you can even buy a skateboard. We had some skateboards oh, made up because that's obviously the nineties, right? So uh, yeah, we yeah. we wrapped a skateboard with uh, a bunch of skateboards with art from the game. So if you want yeah, to feel even game. more That's radical, cool. you can do that. That's cool. I mean, like you, you mentioned just art from the game. I was very impressed because I've not played the flat screen. I've not played the flat screen version. I'm kind of, you know, mostly playing VR or like just the bigger PlayStation titles. So I've not played the flat screen version. So this is my first time in it. And obviously Man. you have the, the cut scenes are obviously in, in, in 2D. But the, the that initial cutscene was so cool to me because you have obviously the the story and then you're in front of the the laundromat and all of a sudden it cuts to the VR world and it yeah, looks yeah, yeah. like almost identical to the the two D version in terms of the graphics. I was very impressed in terms of how like sharp the graphics are in there. Like albeit like when you're outside, there is just a laundromat and you yeah. know there's the street and such. It's not like there's too many things going on, but. I was just impressed with the sharpness. It really felt like you just stepped into the game from that 2D to the to the obviously VR world. It was really cool. Well, like like I said, going back to what I said earlier, that this is that's like the introduction of the game. Um, you know, Ashley's life is a game, right? So imagine mm-hmm. Ashley's got this wake. You know, pr- you know, like I like I said with listening to music on a commute. That you know, that's getting in the zone of that's what you need to sort of maybe start your day and then. And then yeah. when the 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 intro uh, fades out, you're in the real mm-hmm. world, you know. So then, like you've you've put yourself in this parallel uh, parallel universe of like, oh yeah, everything's great. And then maybe yeah. we take the, the the glasses off, and you're like, okay, well now you've got to go do a day's uh, mm-hmm. day's work. So there's a lot of things in there. I, I love that you like the style. There's an amazing clerks reference in the intro, which I'm 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 sad that no one has said like <laughs> just commented on it like. You go past a building that says, um, I assure you we are open or whatever the, the famous clerks um, 
uh, line is. Yeah. No, I feel bad. I never picked up on it either. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when, when we when we were doing that um, intro, I was like, we've got to have that. That's got to be in there. Mm-hmm. It's like that. All oh, right. It's the, like I said, those are just one of many Easter eggs uh, and such that people can just find in the game. And just, it's just a, a perfect love letter to that, that era. And I think because a lot of people are like, a lot of people who listen to the show are in their like 30s and such. Okay. Oh, okay. And, Brilliant. Uh, 30s, 40s, and such. Like we've got a bit more of an, I would say, quote unquote older. I don't want to say that because I'm also in that cat in that park now. Um, but, it's it's their era in a way like that's when yeah, they yeah, were yeah. teenagers and such right so i think that's why a bunch of the community members that we have absolutely love this game because it just you just smashed that nostalgia <laughs> button fall and throughout uh, uh, I'm everything so in the game so. um yeah. it's full of, it's full of easter eggs and stuff like that even dre who i mentioned earlier uh there's a photo of him so when you unlock the employee of the the month um mm-hmm. the, the photo is him is like uh, uh, oh. of that era in that as a you know as a teen um i That's won't go cool. and get her but my cat is in the game we when you completed <laughs> a challenge via the email um system i was we were like well what do we give them they can't really mm-hmm. you know no point in giving them money so i was just like well what did you get in the 90s like you got chain mail that's effectively what this is but you know people shared photos so th- mm. there's you know developer cats and dogs in, in the game or whatever so uh yeah so oh, yes, so- yeah. socks my cat who's asleep at the moment she's she's uh socks i'm trying in to get her too. into as many games as possible i want her to <laughs> you know like see as opposed to credits for a human being so i want to see how no. far we can go with her um <laughs> she, she's <Yeah>. my future <laughs> <laughs> i've seen the instagram cat so I want yeah um i don't and- know <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny you say that just a quick tangent my um i have a friend here in vancouver who worked on the visual effects for for dune um the movie dune and yeah she, her um chinchilla is okay. is the desert mouse in in dune and she was like i, I wanted to get my animals in there like uh, i don't want to yeah. get my kids in there or my yeah, yeah, husband yeah. in there no, or anything. Exactly, yeah. i just want to get my animals because that's the that's what's going to make it <laughs> yeah no it's, it, exactly it's like being in that industry and then and someone going to you oh can you get my mate like an extra no 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 but if they've yeah. got a pet and you want them get to it. It, yeah get them yeah. in yeah everyone everyone in um yeah <laughs> so really. um I, I don't know if you do you know the um uh the twitch streamer limmy no i don't know no okay no. there's uh there's a streamer who's uh is a scottish comedian writer he had a a a program on bbc scotland over here he's a very niche but he's he's a very he's i think the best way of describing him is like scottish angry gamer but like um it's you know it's scottish to the next level he he's really f- um renowned for binning games so he'll mm. be streaming a game and then he'll just like alt f4 and be like oh, i've had enough of that yeah. and yeah and the, and his chat and community always sort of wind him down that road and like wind him up as mm-hmm. much as possible now when I, he's like I'm a huge fan of his. And when he started playing it, I was like, oh God, I don't know how long this is going to, you know, he's going to, it's going to take him an hour. He's going to get annoyed with something. He's going to turn it off. And he played one day of it and then came back for day two, then day three and finished it. And I was sat there going, wow, if I can get the, you know, hook someone in like that. And I think it's like you mentioned about your, um, you know, the listeners of the podcast and your community it's like maybe it's of an era and an age of people who sort of really it speaks to them in so many different ways we've mm-hmm. had some amazing um stories from people sent uh letters and stuff like that sent to us uh do people still send letters you know what i mean though um uh, <laughs> yeah. Pigeon. About- I think people still do pigeon mail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah, yeah. Tele- we had a telegram the other day. <laughs> Someone left. <laughs> yeah, um, and um, yeah, we've had some really heartfelt stories about people talking about their youths, but also like um, people who have played it couch co-op and stuff like that, and been like yeah. obviously a bit more difficult in VR, but like they've played it together and they've just really, really in- enjoyed it. So it's it's mm. been it's been a real magical process and it's going to be even more fun seeing people play it on VR, I think, because once they get to a certain state, uh, part of the story, I think they'll, you know, they'll have that emotional connection with the the game further, furthermore. 
absolutely yeah um kind of towards the end of this podcast here just to go into like some some potential future aspects one of the main questions that we'll probably get for people who have played the flat screen is the the lack of multiplayer in the game in vr and such as there's obviously we had multiplayer in the in the flat screen right version and such is, is that something that you've been trying to fix into the vr world or is it just didn't really work the same um, uh well a local multiplayer we went of course unless you were playing with two cyclopses possibly I'm sure um, <laughs> um no we, ne- we never um we never did online f- multiplayer for the original title oh, okay. and um okay we never set out t- to do it for uh for vr in a multiplayer Got it. and also I, I i don't think with the uh the sort of pick up and play part of the, the the game if it would really work that well over because mm. it's such a social experience of being there physically together um i don't know how well maybe maybe it's something uh we, we we're you know it, as you can tell everything has been led by the community with the game so mm-hmm. if there's a sudden pickup in people uh, playing the VR version who really wish that they were experiencing it with others, then of course we can always uh, yeah. look into that thing. But no, not at all. Or maybe maybe online leaderboards at the very oh, least, potentially. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh, I beg your pardon. So all the leaderboards are in there. So yeah, no. So every oh, time. Okay, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Perfect. So, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. All the leaderboards are in there. So don't worry. Yeah. So as soon as, okay, you great. know, as soon as it comes out, for those who've played it already, like get to that game you want that number one spot on, all right? And then and then smash it up immediately. So yeah, no, all that. All, so all, all the leaderboards that were that are in there at the moment, they're all like from the actual flat no, screen. No, as well? no, no, no. So the no. We'll, the flat screeners are on their own, and then uh, got it. Everyone playing VR, VR is... will be in with that. Yeah, got it. That makes sense. Okay, I think that that's fine. I, yeah, because obviously I didn't play the flat screen. I didn't realize when I saw multiplayer in Steam, I assumed that was online because that's just like oh, everything nowadays. But yeah, no, that so makes yeah. sense. That that makes sense. And also, local multiplayer in VR just doesn't really work. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's just not. Pass really. it over. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe one day when VR headsets become really cheap and everyone kind of has it, and like but, uh, uh, you know, literally this thin or whatever. Yeah. Then yeah, then, 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 that's exactly. where we go. Fair enough. And then um, just kind of finally here. It, Obviously, the flat screen version, there was like various DLCs. I think you brought like a Dance Dance Revolution kind of game, inspired game and such like that. Are Is like DLCs going to be in the pipeline for VR VR version? Are you planning to maybe be, bring in some more cabinets as we go? Or are you not so, allowed to say anything? So That's of fine. Course, <laughs> so of course, I couldn't say anything right now. Um, but yeah. uh, we will... All I will say is we the VR version will be supported in the same way that we supported the the other platforms. And once again, um, it's all about the the conversation between uh, us and the players. We've already had people uh, lucky enough to get hands on with it, and we're, we're aware of certain things that we might have to tweak for VR. So mm-hmm. um, we're already working towards um, beyond launch uh, bits and pieces. But yeah, no. So nice. we'll be supporting it uh, quite similar to how we did uh, the fantastic the version. Perfect. Um, and just to just to wrap up this, just obviously we're, we're talking about arcades here, but um, we've talked about your favorite kind of games in arcade paradise but in general oh. as you know if you in arcade games what is give me one of your like favorite arcade uh oh, titles growing up you've got a oh you've i know got, i put you on the spot here yeah you really have <laughs> um uh wind jammers was a a, a big hit um, a big favorite um not that i was at all good at it um uh, but so <laughs> so maybe you've got to pick one that you can actually probably you know keep you know uh put up a fight on um uh oh what was the um uh words i've said a lot about light gun games because i really like light gun games but um (laughs) what was the really famous one that had all the mini games in that's gonna annoy me oh gosh i don't know (laughs) Um, (laughs) am i allowed to cheat well let's find out you can cheat you can look it up whilst you're whilst you're looking (laughs) up um for the viewers and the listeners my favorite one by far was mortal kombat i i loved the Mortal Kombat 2 and Mortal Kombat 3 in the arcades was just... I was also, like, not the best at them. I had to play on, like, the smaller towers and such. I could not play it on, the, like, the master towers and such. But, my gosh, it was so so satisfying when you, like, land an uppercut or, like, combo of punches in that game. And, yeah, it's, well, it's also with, with stuff like that as well, um, 
uh, the fatalities were obviously have never been, you know, you never knew what, so word of mouth no. would have to be. And someone could, yeah. someone would turn up and do it and you'd be like, oh my, oh, what was that? Yeah. And they, they wouldn't tell you. No, 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 no. Just, no, uh, no. Um, yeah. So I think my favorite would be Point Blank. Um, mm. But I did, I did enjoy a lot of the, the fighting game. I've never been good at fighting games. That's the problem. Like I've really enjoyed no. them, but I'm just dreadful at them. Um, and like, yeah. uh, Virtue Fighter, I'm, I always enjoyed as well. I was terrible at them. I still remember there's a there's a small arcade in London, like right in the central of London, um, near Tro- kind of like where the cursed, uh, the cursed child or whatever the uh, Harry Potter Trocadero. Uh, I think you're uh, is that the one? Possibly. Yeah, yeah. I re- I was in London like a couple Christmases ago, and I, I went down I went down in there, and I was like, oh, okay, like, arcade, and they had like. They had Street Fighter Tekken and stuff. And I jumped on um, Street Fighter. And then this one guy, the only other guy in this arcade was like, oh, do you want to play together? And I was like, okay, yeah, that'd be sure. Destroyed. Oh. Oh, it was a yeah, waste yeah, of yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. a waste Why, of why did money. I sign up for that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was like, go away. Let me let me play the novice. <laughs> let me play the novice AI. <laughs> I, yeah, 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 yeah. Leave me alone. I think that would have been the Namco world that was there. It's really sad, right? It no longer exists. They shut it. It's gone. Yeah, oh. which is so bizarre because, like, sad. yeah, it, it was small, whole, but like, yeah, yeah, it's 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 really bizarre because I I don't understand why these sort of places these places should be really doing well now because of how you know activity these sort of I, over here mm. we've got a lot of um like uh, flight uh, flight clubs which is like AR darts and darts. stuff like that yeah yeah and that's yeah. really taken off over here so uh, I'm surprised someone hasn't just doubled down and go right reopen the arcade get the arcades back in yeah um, because darts and it seems like darts and mini golf or crazy golf is yeah like yeah yeah, yeah. really doing well <laughs> yeah. yeah uh top golf yeah i think top, yeah top golf, golf is, and such yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. They just need an arcade that serves as alcohol and you'll be fine, I'm sure. Like, anyone yes. will get down well, there. Well, like I say, that was... The, well, actually, it didn't serve alcohol, but um, I, I always remembered playing arcade games in a kebab shop and the, the yeah. it was it was a fighting game they had. It might have even been Mortal Kombat, but mm. the machine was knackered. Like, because mm-hmm. all... Obviously, just people who were out of, uh, you know, a few too many drinks were in there causing trouble anyway. And like it was just gunked up and stuff, but it somehow yeah. still worked. And just thinking, now I don't know how these things kept going. Yeah, that's the beauty of those things, though. You know, you don't know how they work, but they just work. It's like the old like blow on the cartridge, and it, that trick seems to work. Like yeah, all that old tech, but it's all it's all fun and games. But um, Sam. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. No right? problem, I appreciate Zach. you coming on your Sunday night uh, or Sunday yeah. evening, rather. Um, I know it's my morning, but you know it's my podcast. This is something that I do. <laughs> you don't have to I mean, come on, but I, I appreciate good, it. Good on you. Like that is some dedication. Uh, years and years ago, I used to do. A, um, I do did a podcast. Wait, years mm-hmm. ago. Absolutely not. Well, not when now podcasts are cool. But I always remembered like <laughs> you persuade. You had to just. Uh, I do it every Sunday. I've got to do it. And um, I actually really enjoyed, uh, th- thanks for your time, Dan. I really enjoyed chatting about the game. And uh, yeah, it was great. it was worth um, reminiscing on, you know, arcade times. Absolutely. So Arcade Paradise is out on April 25th. Um, I'll put the links and such in the show notes if you want to check out the vinyl, if you obviously want to check out the Quest Store link as well. You can um, wish list it and you can pre order it. There you go. So, yeah. Yeah. There. And you can pre order it. Do we have a price for it? Do you uh, know it off, uh, top of your off head? the top of my head? I couldn't translate what price it is in dollars either. So, I don't think it's worth me punting That's for like, the price yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can see it on the link uh, below. And I'm sure <laughs> if, if people join my, uh, join our Discord, the LTO Discord, we have the game referrals in there so i'm sure you'll be able to save 25 percent if you jump into our discord someone's always someone in the uk is it alan i think it is he's in the uk he's most he's always like one of the first to to wake up obviously in the community he's mostly north american he gets in he buys it puts the 25 percent in front of everybody straight away so i'm trying to think uh, the the price i should have said was worth it there you go i'm gonna give that (laughs) i'm gonna do that one (laughs) (laughs) beauty thanks so much sam i really appreciate it and thanks everyone for listening and watching and we will see you next week for a regular episode i think no guests next week so we'll see you then